Hi. Uh, in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how the EPINet integration in GVSIG works. EPINet is a module dedicated to uh, water management systems for design and verification of the systems, and it has been uh, implemented in side GVSIG. For now, uh, you can access this from this menu called Hydrologist. It has a submenu EPINet, and um, you have uh, a set of four tools and uh, utility. And these four tools are placed in the proper order they should be run. So the first thing to do is prepare the data. Most probably you will have already your network data ready. Uh, but EPINet, the EPINet module, uh, requires you to define a certain set of attributes uh, and it will work with shape files. So uh, if you click this first action, create project files, it will ask you for a folder inside which to save the generated shape files and it will ask you for the projection in which you want to work. I'm using a projection that's fine for Italy. So it will create a, a view called EPINet layer view and it will present all a set of layers which are all the layers um, necessary to run EPINet. In fact some of those are optional but uh, you will need for sure pipes and junctions and then it will the rest will depend on your network. So let's have a quick look as you can see uh, they are already styled. I'm going to show you just a couple of features. Uh, right now I'm not giving any uh, I'm not taking any care of snapping, so this network would not work, but I'm just showing you how you can add junctions. And you just use the G usual GIS tools to do so. And if we have a look at the attributes table, um, this is quite important because it shows you that pipes are connected to all of the layers. Um, reservoir and tanks and junctions are nodes and you will have to for each node to define an ID and then for each pipe a part of defining an ID you will have also to tell which the start and which end node are connected to that pipe. There are another set of attributes that have to be filled in. Uh, for example, for the pipes, you have the length, diameter, roughness, the demand, and diameter, roughness, and demand are absolutely values that you will need to fill in manually. You know how your network is built. I think this these are usually uh, data that you have anyways, so you have to fill them in here. There are another set of attributes like start node, end node, the length, or for the junctions, the elevation, which are attributes that could be extracted from the geometry uh, or the geography of the network. So these uh, can be extracted with the second module, which is the sync project file modules. I'm going to show you this in, in a second. So uh, to do so, I will close this testing project and I will show you a real world project I have here. Um, this is a small village in the northern part of Italy. And let me do this. Uh, I have, these are, this is the test folder I just created. As you can see, all the layers are generated here. Uh, this here is the project, the real world project I was talking about. Let me just load uh, the layers I have. I drag them into the layer view. And it's not very visible, 
it is in this area and here the utility style layers comes in handy because if you run this it will style the layers if the attributes are the right ones it will style and the names of the layers are the right ones it will style them uh, the epi net way okay once i have this uh, let's assume i generated it manually i've used snapping because junctions need to be placed exactly at the start and end of the pipes the pipes need to be connected properly each pipe need to have a junction we can have loose ends in the pipeline if you do this manually you will most probably do a lot of errors at least at the beginning this happens a lot so we have this second tool the sync project shape files not only takes care to verify that all the pipes have a junction or any other artifacts artifact at the end or uh, at the start uh, it will also check that the the pipes are properly connected and it will also fill in those attributes that don't have to be uh, inserted manually so let's have a run on it and let's see what it does the first thing it will ask is if there is a raster present in the layer view and in this case we have two aspect and dtm it will ask if uh, we want to use a certain raster in this case dtm castello um, to extract the elevation of the junctions uh, if we added manually in the attribute table the precise elevation of the junctions we will say no in this case but uh, in my example I don't have the elevations so I will say yes what happens it will read the elevation model the terrain model uh, and it will extract the elevation and fill in the attribute tables the uh, volume uh, usually this might not be precise maybe you have a precise one it's not it, it depends on how, how you want to work with it once the shape files are created I noticed that some layers went missing so since I didn't have pumps and valves at the start uh, they were removed from my layers list and if I have a look at the attribute table as you can see the length and the start and end node of each one have been filled with data have been populated let's have a look at this here here we should have uh, a reservoir which is called R1 and a tank which is called T1 and let's open also the junctions as you can see the elevation has been filled in so I'm expecting this pipe to have a start node or end node T1 and R1. So somewhere we should have a T1 and R1, which is this one. As you can see, if I select it, this is indeed the proper pipe. If you didn't snap properly, this module will open up a warning dialog and will tell you that uh, some pipes were not properly uh, joined it will also tell you which ones so it will be quite easy to correct the problem once this module has been run and the data are generated and i'm saying generated because in fact it is not that the original data are modified original data are always kept but we have a new folder inside the data folder which is called synced and inside this we have the layers that are loaded here right now these are the layers which have filled in if I have a look here as you can see it has the fill in elevation so this is the set of data with which you will work from here on once this is done you are ready to run EPI net and you find the EPI net running action here and we will talk about it in the next tutorial.